So I came across this game on Steam, and fun fact, I couldn't originally pronounce the name. But then I saw the full name of the game, and I put two and two together, and I was like, oh, yeah, Neverinth. When I scrolled down to see the reviews, I saw someone describe it as a Soulsborne roguelike. I knew I had to jump in this shit. Neverinth was created by React Games, but published by another indie, and the game itself was posted on Steam April 30th. The story goes like this. The Norse gods are dead. Yadrissel summons the last hope into the Neverinth to go through the trial to claim the title of Valkyrie. As was stated before, the game plays like Dark Souls and Bloodborne, meaning the combat's on the slower end. You can do light attacks, heavy attacks, a unique weapon move, and the EX versions of the light and heavy attacks. EX attacks are stronger and faster versions of the normal moves, and there are only two weapons in the game thus far, Sword and Shield and Great Sword. They plan to have three more in the future. Every swing you do, every time you run, any roll, any leap you take, any successful block, any breath you take will cost stamina. So if you're looking to get good at this game, you better start using your brain to analyze the attacks that the enemies have and react accordingly. Now there's the roguelike element of the game. Every time you start a run, you get the bare minimum. Weapon on your back and three bottles of mead. During your run, you'll fight enemies and defeating them, you'll get essence. Essence is the XP of the game. You can use it at the statue to level up your stats. You can also acquire items for both for free and some at a price. Some with essence, some with your life. Just like any roguelike, when you die, you lose everything. Well, barring the cubes that you pick up from the mobs. They become Tetris pieces that you can put in your stats permanently. If you fill everything, you get a bonus. And also, when you die, you get achievements that will unlock more items that will spawn in your next run. My time with the game only got better the more hours I put into it. Getting used to the combats, the stat system. This isn't the game that gives instant gratification. You're gonna have to unlock some things before you have fun. I think I had a good head start because I have experience playing Dark Souls. Mainly Dark Souls 2. I didn't start having trouble until I got to the first boss. And then that's when I started chugging that meat, boy. That meat tastes real good. After pushing through the first boss, I can say I was officially addicted to the game just because I wanted to see what was next. However, there's something I'm not too sure about, and that's the blue haired girl. I understand that the red one has the leap plus the leap attack, and the blue haired girl has the roll. But is that all there is to it? Does it have more iframes? I mean, if not, there's. I don't feel like there's any reason to play her. They both do the same thing, except the redhead does more with the leap. Why not give the blue haired girl something? Maybe on the defensive side? Nah, no, no, it's just a thought. And that's all I really have to suggest for the game. I guess maybe you could mix up the mob placements, maybe adding stat potions. Let's see if the community has something interesting to recommend. Oh, I see where their priority lies. Anyway, with that said, so you want to play Neverinth? Ultimately, that choice is yours. But if you're interested in this early access game, it is $15.99. And if you have any suggestions for the game, if you've played it, why don't you go tell them on the discussion boards? I'm sure they'll love to hear it. Anyway, that's it from me. See you in the next one. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of this.